To start the tutorial for drawing in 3D, first we'll pull off the tool sets that we'll use for this exercise. Viewing Tools, 3D Drawing Tools, and a variety of 2D drawing tools as well. Lines, arcs, and circles. Drawing in 3D adds a third axis to the X and Y axes that you work with in 2D. This Z axis allows you a third dimension to allow you to create objects with a three-dimensional thickness or shape. These shapes can be put together and create either simple or complex objects which we call models. Looking at the top view, this looks straight down at the X and Y axis. Notice that each of the static front, top, back, side views are defined by two axes, in this case the X and Y. You can see both the green and the gray rectangles, but notice that the gray rectangle obscures part of the green. Other views, like the front, the back views, are also defined by two axes. The front view by the X and the Z axis. The back view also by the X and Z axis. However, the difference is much like looking at the back of the house or the front of the house. And similarly with the left and the right view, the left view defined by the Y and the Z axis as well as the right view. And back to the isometric view or the trimetric view, either one. Just as in working with 2D drawings, grids can give you a great distance reference as well as make it easier to draw. The grids, or in 3D called work planes, allow you to quickly and easily create geometry with your mouse and cursor. Setting the work plane on the top view you'll notice that you're actually snapping to this reference grid called the work plane in 3D. We'll change the work plane to side. Notice by default the work plane is drawn through the origin or 0, 0. When I draw my cylinder now it's drawn perpendicular to the work plane. But remember the work plane allows you to pick points against it to define whatever geometry you'd like. Now we'll set it for front. And again, in this case, we can simply pick a point and draw out perpendicular to that point. Now in this case, we've actually picked a point on an object, the end point of that red L. Now, from the File menu, just select File New. And make sure from the Work Plane menu that your grid is active. If not, choose Show Grid. These are the shapes used to create 3D drawings. These are called primitives. Each of the different types of primitives have sub-tool menus to give you options for draw methods. We'll choose the block diagonal method, pick two points on the work plane or on the grid, and drag up to set the Z value. So in this case, you set corner to corner 
to set the footprint of that 3D box or block and then a third point up to set the Z or height. Now the cylinders, notice there's also methods for drawing the cylinders. First setting the base. As you draw, remember you can change the properties in the data input window. Again, in this case the cone, we'll choose the first option, which is setting the center point of its base. The grid is a great help also in drawing in 3D. Prism the data input window allows you to set the number of sides for this tool as well. You can select one of the primitives, go to the inspector and change its color. You can also change the color before you draw and then the subsequent items after that are drawn will be drawn in that color. also to help you draw an extension to what you've learned in previous tutorials about snapping to other points in the drawing. In this case we've chosen the line tool and we're actually snapping to points in 3D space. Notice we've just drawn along the X and Y plane but we're also snapping between endpoints on the bottom and on the top of that cube. As we change our view, you'll see these lines are actually drawn in 3D space. This also means that you can edit in 3D. We'll use snaps, drag this block just across the grid, but also note that by grabbing it at an endpoint and then positioning it at one of the top endpoints, we can begin to start stacking them. In this case, I've taken the center of the base of the cylinder and positioned it on the face of the top surface of the prism. Select the top view, double click on the selection tool, and delete everything in the drawing. Go to the multi-line tool and draw a 2D shape. You've seen the basic building blocks for creating 3D objects. There are other ways to create. In this case we're going to draw a 2D profile of the face of a mechanical part. We'll choose this arc, snap from this endpoint to this endpoint, and set the included angle. And from the circle tools, this tool allows us to set the center and side point. So we'll snap to the center of the arc and draw in a circle. We'll go back to the trimetric view. We'll select everything. And now we'll find the extrude solid tool. Now we already have a selection, so it will use that for the extrusion. The prompt says pick two points for the extrusion direction and length. Pick a point at the end point and another point up along the z-axis we drew a simple 2D profile, selected it, and then extruded it to create this 3D part.